The hottest topic in education today is critical race theory, a controversial doctrine being used by activists to advance their agenda in the classroom and in the corporate world. Today, we're examining critical race theory, often called CRT, as it impacts America's students. I'm Angela Moravito with Campus Reform, and you're watching CRT 101. Critical race theory assumes that American society has racism baked into its founding legal documents and that American society today is animated by white supremacy. Because critical race theorists see all American institutions as racist, they push for dismantling them. Professor Ibram X. Kendi, a leading practitioner of critical race theory, makes clear that ending discrimination is not his goal. Kendi wrote in his best-selling book, How to Be an Anti-Racist, and I quote, the only remedy to racist discrimination is anti-racist discrimination. Critical race theory started on college campuses in the 1970s, and it continues to be perpetuated through higher education today. Nearly all of the movement's founders have held professorships at major universities, including Kimberly Crenshaw at Columbia and UCLA, Richard, Richard Delgado at Alabama Law, and Mari Matsuda at the University of Hawaii's Law School. Colleges continue to embrace leading critical race theorists right now. Ibram X. Kendi holds a professorship at Boston University. Avowed Marxist Angela Davis teaches at UC Santa Cruz. And Robin D'Angelo, who created a training telling people to be less white, is tenured at Westfield State. There are policies in place right now across this country that are the direct result of CRT's success among leftist academics and media bias that sold these ideas to the public. Some of these you might have not even realized are CRT. The movement to abolish the police comes from critical race theory. Critical race theorists were some of the first to introduce the concept of microaggressions. CRT advocates have called for laws to ban speech that they deem hateful. And they do this in part by equating language to violence when it's language that they don't agree with. Policies like hiring quotas and affirmative action are also products of critical race theory because they discriminate on the basis of race, but in the name of equity. CRT started in the classroom, but it's ended up in the boardroom with United Airlines announcing that it would consider race and sex of candidates how they hire pilots instead of simply hiring the most qualified people. Coca-Cola denied using a critical race theory training on LinkedIn from Professor Robin D'Angelo, who advised participants to, and I quote, be less white. But Coca-Cola did, they actually had recommended this training to their employees. Even the US military is not immune. In the spring of 2021, the Pentagon resumed critical race theory trainings that the Trump administration had previously banned. The US Navy has repeatedly recommended that its leaders read books authored by critical race theorists that accuse all white people living today of being inherently oppressive and deserving of blame for historical evils that happened hundreds of years prior. The mainstream media has perpetuated critical race theory by consistently describing it in a positive light. CNN called this set of ideas a lens that can refine your understanding of history. Time called it a way of seeing the world that helps people recognize the effects of historical racism in modern American life. The Washington Post says that CRT examines the ways in which race and racism influence US politics, culture, and law. But despite the rosy picture painted in the press, the way critical race theory has manifested in classrooms has been very, very different from how the left-wing media describes. In California, a third grade teacher forced kids to rank themselves in terms of power and privilege. A math education professor at the University of Illinois argued that algebra and geometry perpetuate white supremacy because they say there's one right answer. An English professor at Arizona State suggested that Shakespeare's work is inherently racist, not only because of its content, its characters, but because of how it was used as a teaching tool during the British colonial period. A lecturer in the music department at the University of Nevada said that the song Jingle Bells is racist. A teaching assistant at Oklahoma State said she would no longer teach Spanish, Spanish classes because she's white. And so teaching those classes on her part would amount to white supremacy. Yale School of Medicine hosted a guest speaker who said she fantasized about shooting white people, and the school didn't apologize for this when the video was discovered months later. 
critical race theorists have consistently pushed revisionist history to advance their political agenda. Historians on both sides of the political aisle have found serious inaccuracies in the 1619 project, but that didn't stop dozens of colleges from promoting it and even requiring it of their students. In another instance, critical race theorists have perpetuated the lie that police were invented to catch runaway slaves. Policing was created centuries before colonists ever came to America. In fact, ancient Egypt and ancient China had what we would now call police, but that doesn't matter to the people who are pushing critical race theory. More than a dozen states have either enacted or considered legislation to protect students from critical race theory. And yet the media insists that prohibitions on CRT are somehow bans on teaching about the evils of slavery and the Jim Crow era. But that's not true. MSNBC said these bills seek to ban or limit the teaching of the role of slavery in US history when in fact none of the bills would stop professors or teachers from teaching about the evils of slavery. Not to be outdone, the Washington Post falsely accused opponents of CRT of arguing that examining the role of race in US systems and structures is itself racist. This, this is not true and it does not reflect the content of the bills that are moving through state legislatures. Laws in Iowa, Arkansas, and Idaho do not ban colleges from teaching CRT. They respect academic freedom. But these laws do protect students' rights by banning public colleges from requiring students to take CRT courses. A bill up for consideration in Kentucky would do the same. Bills in Missouri, North Carolina, and Texas that would ban CRT only apply to public K-12 schools, not colleges. And yet the media narrative says that CRT is being wiped out of curricula across the country. Not a single CRT bill or law bans teaching students about the full history of the Civil War and Reconstruction or about the evils of slavery in the Jim Crow era. As this controversy spreads across the country, campus reform will continue to report on students, parents, professors, and more in the fight over this controversial set of beliefs.